Final score, 24-21. They've been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Bob and Holly, the rest of the gang, I'm Mark Jones. Happy New Year from Tampa right now to Lawrence, Kansas. Dan Schulman. Dan? And now we'd like to welcome those of you joining us on ESPN as well as we welcome you to Kansas and Georgia Tech. A New Year's Day special for you here this afternoon. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, and Doris Burke with you. And Georgia Tech, how have they dominated so far? Well, they've done it defensively. They've done an excellent job really matching up. Certainly doing a great job defending on Langford and Giddens. Those two guys have to step up and give him some points. Galindo from the wing misses the three. A long rebound to Aaron Miles, who quickly has come back into the game. And now he and Robinson in there together. Coach Dex done a great job in uh, analyzing, evaluating film. They realize without Simeon, they can really attack their perimeter shooters. Quick that three shot. by Giddens. Yeah. He's become a guy that looks for the three so often. I think it negates a lot of his other parts of his game. It's inconceivable a guy as talented Five and athletic throws. as Giddens has only been the line five times total in eight games and he's a very good three-point shooter but hey, he uses it almost at the expense of everything else I'm bald one-eyed 65 years old <laughs> I guarantee I play those games I'll get to the line more than five times <laughs> Muhammad now McHenry in the corner knocks down the three he doesn't shoot him often but he's come up big here so far today now a foul on Morrow McHenry's one of those guys coaches love to have on a team he understands his strengths. He understands his weaknesses. Blends in. He's called what we talked about in coaching a blender. For those of you on ESPN2, who's number one after the break? Our game will be only on ESPN. Come on back and join us. Yellow Jackets up big early. that time of year again. Time for the Lexus December to Remember sales event, where you'll find the best values of the year on your favorite Lexus vehicles. <laughs> See your Lexus dealer. Mm, a lot of flavor on these new spicy wings. A lot of flavor. Maybe too much flavor. Maybe we should stop eating them. <laughs> Too much flavor? All the more to savor. Introducing KFC's brand new finger looking good spicy barbecue wings and smoky jalapeno sauce with a shot of honey. Six for $2.99, 18 for $7.99. Or try our classic honey barbecue wings. There's no such thing as too much flavor at KFC. By Troy on DVD. His love started a war. His courage gave them hope. For Troy! And his legend would live forever. Immortality! Take it! It's yours! Buy it Tuesday on DVD. Introducing Gillette M3 Power. Turn on Gillette's first battery-powered shaving system. Micropulses raise the hair so you shave closer. Feel the power of the world's best shave. M3 Power from Gillette. Sure, there are zillions of computers out there, but they all take you to the same internet. So explain something to me. Why would you pay almost 24 bucks a month to get AOL when you can get net zero for less than 10? You get unlimited access with spam control, email virus protection, all for less than half of what AOL was charging you. Half. And you know something? Net zero ranks higher in customer satisfaction. Let's get with the program here, folks. Let's get with net zero. Go to netzero.com. This is the biggest deficit Kansas has faced at any point in any game so far this season. One of the reasons, the absence of Wayne Simeon out of the thumb injury. He is standing by with Doris Burke. Well, Dan, you know he'd certainly rather be on the court. Wayne, I'm sure it's difficult to watch this, especially on the offensive end. What is what is your team struggling with down there? Uh, well, I think we're just struggling with uh, attacking the paint. Uh, you know, we're settling for long jump shots. Georgia Tech's doing a good job of pressing us out of our offense right now. And uh, when Sims is out of the game, uh, you know, we definitely have to attack the paint trying to get inside sure you're anxious to get back coach is telling us at least four weeks tell us how that bum is feeling uh, I don't know about four weeks uh, you know I'm hoping for better you know I'm uh, feeling pretty good right now in the cast uh, uh, just really waiting to see what the doctors say and uh, wait to, to get out of this cast right now for you and your classmates it has been oh so close and yet so far a championship has eluded you though two trips to the final four Wayne what does it take to get you over the top this year uh, well this is it right now and uh uh, this is it, and uh, you know, for me, you know, the four seniors, so we're just going to try to press through uh, uh, this year and give it our all. 
All right, good luck. Thanks for joining us. Dick? I'll tell you one thing. As you watch Kansas come up the center and score, it's going to show. Yeah, B.J. Elder down, Dick. Yeah, B.J. Elder went down on that layup. He looked like he lost his balance. And in obvious pain, it was clutching the, the back of his left leg. Leads you to believe maybe a cramp? Yeah, hopefully nothing more serious than a cramp. He went flying down the floor trying to catch up with that pass and had to really extend himself to get the ball up on the glass and obviously came down awkwardly. Kansas came back the other way, five on four, got them a layup. See, he lost his balance yeah, right there, lost his footwork. Right here, you can see his stride. Loses his normal stride. Yeah, he's in pain on the way up. You can see, you're right. He's had some great games. What a shootout he had against North Carolina. He and McCants went head to head for 31 and 30. That's right. Going to be some outstanding games in the ACC. Wow. All the great guard play, all the talent with North Carolina and Duke and Georgia Tech and Maryland and Wake and on and on it goes. Well, early you got like seven teams. Look like they're going to be in a run for the NCAA tournament. Seven ranked teams right now for the ACC, including Georgia Tech, nine and one. The only loss to Gonzaga. And Georgia Tech, nine and one, ranked ninth in the country. Muhammad is foul. He's a guy athletic enough to get his shot whenever he wants it. They have so many people that can hurt you on different parts of the floor. They can hurt you from the wing. They can hurt you in the three-second area with Shencher, who's been quiet thus far this afternoon. They can hurt you from the perimeter. Certainly Elder knocking threes and buying them. They can hurt you with Jack and his penetration. Very difficult team to scout when you scout to be able to defend. The foul on Giles is first. Muhammad gets a friendly bounce on the free throw. He's just a 47% shooter from the line. Georgia Tech is a team only 60 four percent and they're better than Kansas that's an area of concern but boy you would think they're going to get better and better when they face better competition when the free throw line becomes more meaningful Langford Miles and Giddens all quiet here offensively to start this game they haven't scored from the field yep. either one of the three have those three come up blank tough to win good look here for Miles they need it down Absolutely deafening noise. Never heard anything like it. Muhammad baseline. Muhammad gets it back. And now Mike Kitts has a foul call against Kansas. There is a special toughness about the kids from Georgia Tech. They really have that toughness that coaches like. Himself did a great job at Tulsa. Hey, by the way, they're looking for a coach. I got the guy for him. All right. I got the guy. For Tulsa? Tulsa, listen. I got a winner for you. John Phillips resigned. We are looking for a coach. And that is a great place to coach. Buddy Smith came from there. Think about Nolan Richardson, Bill Self, Matt Doherty. Matt Doherty, after working at Notre Dame, North Carolina, all the years he was, boy, we was building his program, making it so special. I really believe he would be a natural choice for Tulsa. Don't nod your like head, it. yes, say I yes. I like it, I like it. Well, I know you're nodding your head, like yes, it. yes. They can't see you. I got, I got three people talking to me at the same time. I'm trying <laughs> to listen to you. Hey, talk and listen to me. Like you are the loudest one, so it's easier to, to listen to you. <laughs> I think it's a good choice. I think you're right. Matt Doherty deserves another chance. He did a great job. Remember, they, they, he was the national coach of the year his first year at North Carolina. He had a great year at Notre Dame as well. And so he recruited all those kids. Yeah. Dan Spelman will play. Boy, the crowd is in an absolute frenzy here today. Georgia Tech so tough. Jump hook by Shencher Short. But a foul is called on Giles. They have to get the ball inside and shut you a little more. And came on so strong at the end of the year. Dick, third foul on Giles, and Bill Self's going to have to make a change. Well, he has enough bodies there with Jackson and Khan and Giles trying to find one of them to step up. Let it be Galindo. Shencher, the 7-foot-1-inch Aussie at the line, a late cut. 
One of the last cuts for the Australian Olympic team over the summer, and a guy did over the course of last year. You did a number of his games. He got better week by week last year. He really did. And Jerry Jack has to give a little basketball information, shares with him some of the stars of the past in Australia. Luke Longley, who came yeah. here, Andrew Gaze. Andrew Gaze, yeah. Came here for one year at Seton Hall. Stolen by Will Bynum. And then back into the backcourt. Good call yeah, by Mike Yeah, A great play, but then an unfortunate play for Will Bynum. Doris Burke has an update on the injury to B.J. Elder. Doris? Guys, it is a strained hamstring. He is now back in the locker room being evaluated. His status is unknown at this point. All right, Doris, thank you. So apparently worse than a cramp if he has strained the hamstring. That's the kind of thing... Sometimes it gets better quickly, and sometimes it can really linger. That's why it's so difficult to project the where we're yeah. sitting, and we don't have medical background to be able to determine what an injury is. All right, after a little bit of confusion, the ball is awarded to Kansas after the over and back. Georgia Tech up a dozen. Just the second time ever that the Yellow Jackets have come to Allen Fieldhouse, lost here back in the 70s. Look at the help they're giving on length. When every spot's an opening, the defense rotates over and gives some help to close the lane. Nice drive by Robinson, but left the scoop a little bit short. Sasha Khan, by the way, number 24, now defending Schencher. He has replaced Giles. Well, here's a chance for young guys like Khan to get a lot of playing time to show the coach what they can do. Anthony Morrow showing his coach what he can do with three from the corner. Tech by 15. Well, like you said, he's a pure shooter. Got great range. Knocked six down against Lafayette. Langford with a nice mid-range jumper. Finally got open for that mid-range jump shot. Violation on the baseline. And Kansas will get the ball back, maybe with a little bit of momentum. Listen to these fans. And they're down 13. Can you imagine if they were up 13? That's beautiful fans, though. When you're struggling and you're behind, it's easy to cheer for people when you're on top of the mountain. I'm sure you get asked this question all the time. I know I do as well, and I don't want to alienate anybody, but when people say to me, what's the most, what's the best fun you can have, the most enjoyable spot to do a game? This is the one I mentioned. It's an absolutely great environment. Well, it's a great environment. There are about five or six yeah. that jump out of me. Yeah. Cameron and Ghost State is special. I think Michigan State is terrific. Oh, it's terrific yeah. down here. Also, I love going to the museum. I love going to North Carolina. Yeah. Even though it might not have the, the kind of closeness that this has, the bottom line is it's that museum and all that history and that tradition. And Rupp Arena is special. I, I want you to get us a game. I know it's not the old kennel anymore. I want to go to Gonzaga. I want you to call Burke Magnus and get us a game at Gonzaga. Gonzaga? I don't have that kind of power. Get us a game. I tell you, Mark Few, you talk about a rising star in coaching. What he's done with that program just got beat though by Missouri. Yeah. Snyder. After beating Oklahoma State, maybe Washington. Well, you better value the basketball in this game today. And then New Georgia Tech. Yeah, of course they did. Beat them uh, by double figures. Adam Morrison was sensational. And the three goes down for Jarrett Jack on the feed from Will Bynum. And that's where he really improved his game. Maturity, shot selection early in this game. Kansas is taking a lot of bad shots. Boy, Khan needs somebody to get the basketball to. Finally, Langford helps him out. And Langford is fouled by Anthony Morrow. Langford's a driving player. Likes the moment, likes the score. And the spotlight's on, and he usually responds. Well, the spotlight dick is on here today, and Georgia Tech has responded up 16 here at Kansas. Almost there. Okay. Surprise. <gasps> oh, honey. <laughs> How did you get a bow that big? <laughs> it's that time of year again. Time for the Lexus December to Remember sales event, where you'll find the best values of the year on your favorite Lexus vehicles. See your Lexus dealer. We're with Don Everest, known in the poker world as the Matador. If we're going to hurt him in a cash game, you've got to get out of the kiddie pool and start making moves. Tilt premieres Thursday, January 13th, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Presented by Toyota.
Hey, Stacy Urban here out at Urban Nissan, and you know it's football season and a great time to score with one of these great Urban Nissans. Score big with this 04 Sentra, yours at only $178 a month. You'll love the 04 Maxima at $23,959 or $378 a month. Or this full-size Titan, yours, $19,507 or $299 a month. It's Urban Nissan, where you always buy Nissans for less. Just one dollar. Get Comcast high-speed internet for just one dollar. Speeds up to twice as fast as DSL and up to 50 times faster than dial-up. Yours for just one dollar. Plus cutting-edge features like the fan, the Comcast Arcade, and Video Mail. Get the nation's number one blazing fast high-speed internet for just one dollar. That's your first month of Comcast high-speed internet for just one dollar. Call 1-800-COMCAST to take advantage of this great offer. Call now. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Lexus December to Remember sales event, now through January 3rd, and White Noise, the most disturbing film in years, starts Friday. So much history here at Kansas, the Naismith Hall of Fame. You have to turn on a Naismith Drive to get to Fog Allen Fieldhouse, but they're a little bit of trouble here today, now 16 Georgia Tech. If you're going to be an elite basketball team, Dick, you got to have an elite point guard, and each of these teams can make that play. Well, you know, I think the theme right now in college basketball is so many great ones. I mean, I don't see the name Travis Dean around here. I don't see the name of Carl Krauser, yeah. who's terrific at Pittsburgh. But you only can put so many names. Those are my super six right now. I love Williams down in Illinois. He brands more like a second guard. Felton is sensational. Certainly Paul and Jack and just terrific players. And they really cause the efficiency that their teams have offensively. McHenry with a block on Moody. Bynum exploding to the other end. It bounces off his leg out of bounds back to Kansas. Defensive transition is a must against Georgia Tech. The way they kick the ball out. Watch the block shot by McHenry. There's the block. Now Bynum is called for a foul. They made a statement last year was their statement game. That was beating Connecticut early in New York yeah. early. They yeah. sent a loud message that we're legit. Then they followed it up with other big wins, a win at two. And you could see they were ready to play anybody, anytime. And they really have done an amazing job. To do what they did to get to the national championship game with their leading scorer, really, hobbled by an ankle injury, hardly played in three of the tournament games, didn't score in two of them. They lost 10 games during the season, but they learned from that adversity. They dealt with it, and they were better off because of it. And, and that's when you're a real team, when everybody else steps up, and you got everybody participating, contributing. Rashawn Dickey, a freshman out of Plyo, South Carolina. Big guy, 6'9". He can post inside. Yeah. He's an excellent post player. Both these teams are going to lose a lot of quality players next year, but they will not rebuild. They will reload. Their coaches have seen to that. Both of them are outstanding recruiters. Blocked underneath by Kahn. Robinson hits Langford. Nice pass. It's Kahn. Great transition right there. Kahn does a great job running the break. Langford with the good look, the good vision. Ball never really touched the floor. Excellent job in transition. Now Muhammad turns it over. They need a spurt. They're going on locker room, feeling good about themselves. They have to go on a spurt. How about Khan with the block shot, Dick? And then the big guy runs the floor and gets rewarded at the other end. He does right there. Look at the movement of the basketball. Trail man. Great execution. Fill the lane. Khan playing sparingly, but getting a chance. Simeon's out with an injury. Giles picked up three early fouls. So now Sasha Khan trying to show Bill Self. He deserves some playing time. Russell Robinson's going to be a star here at Kansas. That's him with the ball right now. Number three, 12 points in their win over Wisconsin-Milwaukee and some big buckets late in a four-point win over South Carolina. South Carolina lost the heartbreaker as well in Pittsburgh. Langford misses the three. Skying for the rebound is Jack. We'll have an update after half on B.J. Elder's situation. Left with what we've been told is a strained hamstring. Langford and certainly J.R. Giddens are going to really have to elevate their game. 
Sencher pretty quiet so far today at the offensive end, but he's got a lot of help. A lot of different guys can score for Georgia Tech, including this guy. It rims out on Jack. Rebound Giddens. Sencher an excellent passer from the post. They're not utilizing him enough inside. Robinson from the wing, not there. Kansas now one for seven from three-point range. Because they're not good shots. That's poor shot selection. Look at the spin by Muhammad. Doesn't finish. Georgia Tech getting to the loose balls. Shot selection is so important in becoming a winning basketball team. Understanding what a good shot is. So many teams hurry up. They don't have patience. McHenry gets Giddens in the air, goes around him. And a strong rebound underneath by Khan. Khan really going to earn some playing time. Giddens. The baseline jumper is there. Where has he been? He's got so much ability. Came on strong last year. Made that big three to send the game in overtime against Georgia Tech. And Sensor is fouled from behind before the shot by Sasha Khan. Hey, January 6th marks the debut of ESPN2 HD, and we've got a winner. We're not going to tell you just now, but DePaul, Cincinnati, Memphis, Texas, Gonzaga, Santa Clara, you, the folks at home, voted and determined where you're going to send Dickie V. Packet. The game that you're going to, Dick, it's, it's all going to become clear to us after halftime. Where am I going? Where am I going? Nice suitcase. Where am I going? Where am I going? I can't tell you. Come on, tell me where I'm going. The debut of ESPN 2 HD. To get ESPN 2 HD, call your local cable operator or satellite provider. It's either DePaul, Cincinnati, Gonzaga, Santa Clara, or Memphis, Texas. Shanks are shooting 59% from the field. You got to see that he's got to get more touches inside. He's got very few touches yep. thus far because the game has been at such a fast pace. That happened a little bit in the Gonzaga game as well, where Paul Hewitt had to take him out of the game for extended periods because uh, the teams were going small and quick, and there wasn't that much of a role for him. People probably wonder what makes a Paul Hewitt or Bill Self so successful. It's their great communication ability. You can have all the talent in the world. If you can't communicate your concepts and the things you believe in and get the players to trust you, to believe in you, it's very difficult. And both guys do an amazing job in that area. Sensor knocking down his free throws, and the Georgia Tech lead is back to 14. Giddens got in the air, was thinking about the three. Langford came over and took the pass. Now on the floor for Kansas, number 32, Darnell Jackson, a freshman out of Oklahoma City. Giddens for three. That's the second quick three and bad three that he's taken here today. He has become a three-point shooter almost exclusively, and that's why it's limited his effectiveness in going to the free throw line. Five attempts all year. And to get it with Simi and out, everybody has to take their play up a notch. Giddens, no exception. Inside, Dickey the miss, follows his rebound. Moody keeps it in bounds to Miles. Miles all the way. This is with the left hand. Now Georgia Tech's got a three on O. Muhammad. Wow, big time, big time athlete. High riser. Nobody rotated back. Miles took the ball to the goal. Your offside guard has got to rotate back to protect the goal when the point guard penetrates. You know who misses Simeon the most, other than Bill Self, obviously, is Miles. Miles, yeah. Miles really misses him. Ismail Mohammed, a regular on SportsCenter's Top 10 plays, showing you why here today. <laughs> 31 15, Georgia Tech leading Kansas after that spectacular dunk on the 3 on 0 run out for Georgia Tech. Kansas Dick, when they played South Carolina here recently, was down 11 to nothing to begin the game, and it took them the entire game to get back into it. That was the game, actually, where Simeon hurt his thumb. He left, then came back and played the second half. But he's not playing here today. What does Kansas have to do to get back into this well, game? Well, we talked about it. We, they have to find a way to get Giddens and certainly Langford to start giving them some point production because without Simeon on the inside, very difficult to get anything in the three-point area, I like the three-second area. I liked how he said to Doris Berg, she said to him, you know, Coach Self is saying you might be back in four weeks, and he got a big smile on his face, and he said, I'm hoping for quicker than four weeks. Well, you don't want to be impatient if you're, you know, a, a youngster because obviously more is at stake from February and March. Miles sets his feet and knocks down the three. There's a good-looking three-point shot. That's the second good look of what he's had. Yep. Miles doesn't take many, but this year he's hitting them at a better than 50% clip. Now he's got a rebound. 
is very economical in the ones that he takes. Miles, whoa, swatted away. I think that was McHenry. See, Miles right now is saying, I have to help this ball put some points on the board. And he's asserting himself. That's leadership. Yep. That's what we define as a leader. Somebody who understands what's happening on the floor. And Miles is a great winner. Look at that block. Look at that rise. Wow. McHenry with the elevation and the dunk. Georgia Tech up double figures on the road. College Game Day, the only pregame show that telecast live from college campuses, will be covering college basketball. with a special two-hour event Wednesday, January 5th, only on ABC. Filled up? Only Alka-Seltzer is instantly ready to break up and dissolve away the full feeling of indigestion and pain. How about a rematch? Break it up with Alka-Seltzer. Well, it's been a long day for Strahan. What a lovely shot. Yeah! Who's the man? Hey, Strahan, maybe it's your deodorant. Let's start over. No, not that one. This time, start with new Right Guard Gel. It's the strongest gel. Keeps you drier than even the leading stick, so it lasts till the end of the day. Oh, that is brilliant. Yes. Right Guard. Start right, end right. In Good Company is without a doubt the year's surprise hit comedy. What a kung fu grip you got there, Dan. Newsweek raves in a holiday movie season up to its neck in darkness. This nimble comedy is a welcome respite in Good Company. Rated PG-13. In theaters January 14th. Happy New Year, Digger. Happy New Year, David. Glad to see you guys. Georgia Tech. Up on Kansas by 13. This is a game, again, let's go back to the NCAA tournament last year when Georgia Tech eliminated Kansas in the Elite Eight. As you can see, that Georgia Tech has capitalized much better on the turnovers than Kansas has. And this is a big game for Paul Hewitt's team, no question about it. But for the folks here in Kansas, they've been talking about this game for months. Well, I'll tell you, it's been an impressive first half thus far for Georgia Tech. I don't care the fact that Simeon's not on the floor. They have come out with a mindset defensively. They've really done what they've had to do. They've attacking the basket in transition. It is fortunate to avoid an injury as Muhammad went flying, and I mean flying at him oh, to try and, and contest and that three. And he left something on the floor. What did he leave on the floor? What did he leave on the floor? He left something on the floor. The lingerie. Wow. <laughs> and that little pump fake, he went yeah. flying in the sky. I got some outstanding recruits coming in next year. We talk Georgia Tech, certainly Kansas as well. Kansas had a big situation with Micah Downs out of Seattle yeah, where he and, his, he and his father talked to a Seattle newspaper saying, apparently saying they're definitely going to the NBA. That's at least how it looked in the paper as Giddens knocks down a three, but then they kind of retracted the comments and said it still could go either way. The little defensive play by Miles to create the turnover. Giddens knocks it down, makes the three. But see, making that three sometimes with J.R. Giddens, as you're watching right here, Nice spots up. He's got great range. He loves that three. And I think he negates attacking the basket. He's such a great athlete. Miles off to Jackson, the 17 footer. No. And a foul underneath on Georgia Tech. At this point on the stats monitor that we have, Miles has not been credited with any assist here today. He clearly should get one for that bucket. Exactly. By Giddens, so that's at least one. Remember, he needs four today to tie Jock Vaughn's all time. KU record of 804 career assists. Chuck Vaughn was one of my favorite players. What a great team he played on. They were terrific. Had two tough losses. Lost to Arizona in a Sweet 16. And Arizona went on in 97 to win the national title. All those kids that were on that Roy Williams team graduated. They were class. A super team. Get it again. A little bit short. Muhammad. The kick ahead to Jack. 
all the way for Jack, and he is fouled. Boy, how do you slow him down as strong as he is when he gets in transition? See, that's an example why Schechter doesn't get a lot of touches, because they beat people in transition. Yep. And you don't want to stop running, because they run, baby, they run. The foul on Michael Lee, his first. Jack at the line for a pair. Well, he's coming back next year, and then they bring in Lewis Clinch. He comes in a 6'3 guy, and a guy by the name of Austin Jackson from out of the Dallas area. DeAndre Bell, Alade Amanu, they have four good prospects. Jackson, they tell me, you'd be interested in being a baseball expert. They say he could be a first-round draft choice in really? baseball. Boy, what yeah. a tough choice, college basketball or pro baseball. Do them both. You could do both. Yeah, Jack knocks him down. Langford into the game, and now for Kansas replacing Michael Lee, a talented freshman on Georgia Tech, Sam Frederick II. Out of St. Matthews, South Carolina, number 35 has come in. The state of South Carolina's all-time leading high school scorer, and his, his dad, dad could fill it up, right? His dad was a big-time scorer in high school. Suddenly one of the all-time leading scorers in the state. Miles with his Curly Neal impression. Keeps his dribble alive for a moment, now finds Giddens. I like that Curly Neal, yeah. <laughs> Shows me you got some basketball tradition in you. Call him Will Trotter, superstar. Shot clock at five. Miles the floater. Somebody got a finger on that. Moody underneath. Nice play by Moody with the offensive rebound. They're getting a little run here. I'd like to get it into single digits. That would be a plus for them. It was up around 16, 17 for a while, but they've got it down to 10 right now. Not only was it up, they were being embarrassed on their home floor. Having a tough time to score early in the game. Jack trying to post, finds the cutter, Theotis Tarver. Giddens ties them up, Tarver retains possession. Now it is thrown away, but there was a whistle before on a travel. Yeah. You can't hear the whistle, you can't hear anything here today. Carver's had a history of problems physically, had a knee problem. A junior out of Monroe, Louisiana, averaging about 11 minutes per game. He and McHenry set screens, defend, rebound, and leave the scoring to the scores. And they got plenty of those in the yellow jerseys today, even with Elder out with a strained hamstring right now. Final minute of the first half. Kansas trying to make a run. A double up on Langford to get the ball out of his hands. Get it. The feet are set. When the feet are set, it goes down. The quick one's down. Well, he squared his body, had the great look. Good ball with those shorts. They're back. The Jayhawks are back. Rock Chalk Jayhawks. Rock Chalk Jayhawks. Tarver tied up. They're out of sync right now. Georgia Tuck. Not going to get space. And that's a boys jumping up on the sideline about. Kansas ball. Got a chance for a score here. This place will explode. Langford. Rebound tech. Ten seconds to go. And Moody fouls Schencher. Silly foul. Great effort, but a silly foul. Got to know the score. Got to know the board. Get the boy knew it. Meanwhile, Giddens starting to heat up. But Dick, he, he's taking some bad ones and he's taking some good ones. The ones where the feet are set, they go down for him. Ewan was trying to get a timeout with that possession and nobody could see him. Nobody could hear him. Yeah, nobody yeah. could hear him, yeah. see him. It has been. Players have about Louis jumping up and down. He's like Barishnikov. <laughs> that's, that's an invitation to years ago. Louis caught a second jumping on that that's side right. line. Schencher at the line. You can see at Georgia Tech, since Elder went out of the game with that injury, that's when Kansas has made a bit of a comeback. Well, Schencher gets a lot of air underneath those free throws, but they go down for him, and there is the attention that Elder's getting. We've been told it's a strained left hamstring. He's got it wrapped as he's come back to the bench. Well, the two stars, the two scoring stars on the sideline, Simeon on one side yep. and Elder on the other. But these teams are more than about an individual. You saw that as you documented earlier last year when they were without Elder and went for the final game. So losing the, the Huskies. With time. Miles drives. And he's 
foul. Miles will go to the line. Look at his teammates hustle over to pick him up off the floor. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He has really shown some great leadership skills here today. Roy Williams has told me on numerous occasions how he's a special kid with a winner's mentality. There he is attacking the basket. He realizes they have no post game, so now he's becoming a little bit more assertive offensively. Second foul on Anthony McHenry. Miles will shoot a couple. You know, I mentioned Roy Williams two years in a row to the Final Four. I get a feeling sometimes, and it bothers me, that some of the people really didn't appreciate the unbelievable job. That good job. Here. Unbelievable here. job he did here. When you mix with some of their fans, some of their fans coming up to me saying, hey, we don't want to hear about Roy Williams. We want to hear about, well, I'm going to tell you, you're going to hear about Roy Williams because he did a phenomenal job here. Back-to-back -back Final Fours, and then last year, Bill Self's first year, they go to the Elite Eight, losing to Georgia Tech. 2.3 seconds to play. This is the closest Kansas has been since the opening minutes of the game. Last five minutes, he's got to be happy with their effort, especially defensively. Will not count. Did not go, wouldn't have counted if it had. We're at half here at Allen Fieldhouse in Kansas, and the Jayhawks have gotten up off the mat. A 12-3 run to close the half, and they now trail Georgia Tech only by seven, 34-27 at halftime. Doris Burke is standing by with Tech coach Paul Hewitt. Coach, how did Kansas hurt you during that late run? Started turning the ball over a little bit. We got a little tentative. I thought early in the game we did a nice job attacking the bucket. Late there, we, we fumbled it a couple times going to the basket. If BJ is not available in the second half, how does that change what you do? Well, obviously, we're, we're, leading, we're missing a great score, but we're just going to have to, you know, make amends. We're gonna have some guys got to step up. Anthony Morrow, Zam Frederick, those guys, will, they'll fill the void. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Dan? Thank you, Doris. That's something they did last year when Elder got hurt in the NCAA tournament with great success. Georgia Tech by seven and a half. David Amber, Digger Phelps, the UPS Halftime Report. All right, welcome to the UPS Halftime Report. David Amber and Digger Phelps. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone, and really a tale of two halves there, the one with B.J. Elder and really the one without B.J. Elder momentum right now on the Jayhawks side. And the reason why, when you're up 16 and Georgia Tech had that lead, uh, they sort of panicked, but Kansas did the right thing. Get it under 10. That's what you try to tell your kids. Just get it to 9. Obviously, they have it to 7. But now you've got to look in that second half. Well, I just think when you look at what Kansas can do, better shot selection, Keep control of the ball. Don't turn it over. But more importantly, when you look at what's going to happen to me, Jarrett Jack had 29 points that first game. He's got to take this game over for Georgia Tech to stay in this win. Jayhawks just four points in the first eight minutes, but they are very much in this ball game. Loads more coming up on the UPS halftime report. Digger tells us why the road to the Final Four may go through North Carolina and why you can't forget the Huskies' big little man. Huge predictions from Digger. That's next. So many big moments last year in a run for the national championship. Three game-winning shots in the tournament. 66% free throw shooter. He misses the front end, but Mario West runs it down in a fresh 35 for Tech. And there's the athletic ability of West getting to that ball quickly. Nearing the final minute of regulation in a tie game. Kansas will get an opportunity no matter what happens here. Muhammad on the drive. Galindo forces him to turn to the corner. Galindo's giving him a solid performance he defensively really as well. Bynum creating. Loose ball. Muhammad. Kansas has it. Now a held ball situation, and Georgia Tech gets it back. There's that rule that I can't tolerate. Great defensive effort. They come up empty now after it. Georgia Tech gets the basketball because of the arrow. We must get rid of that rule. You penalize, penalize good efforts. You penalize defense, and that's a no-no. What an absolute battle for the loose ball after those missed shots. What do you feel about that rule, Dan? I agree with you. It's got to go. It penalizes yeah. defense. Jack will inbound it, as you would expect, for the Yellow Jackets into the hands of Muhammad. There's a seven-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Jack's going to want the ball. He's going to run it back. Bynum might want it, too. Offensive foul. And what is it Bynum? Wave it off. Bynum very aggressive for the basket. Not afraid to take the big shot at three big winners. Good call by the official. Bob Kansas, now you want to work it to the last shot. Here's Bynum. Defense Rick, rotates over. Christian Moody came over and took the charge, Dick. And that's why he plays for all the intangibles. That's why he's earned some playing time. 
Christian Moody and Alex Galindo have been terrific support players for the Jayhawks today. I don't think if you would have said to Bill Seth when they were down 16 early that they'd have the ball for the last shot to win the game, that he would have believed it. And in a game in which they have never led for even a single second. Watch for the offensive rebound on the missed shot. Defenses have a tendency to let up. Shot clock turned off inside 10 seconds to go. You want the experienced players. Langford's a slasher and a driver. 16-footer. Schencher. No basket, no shot would not have counted, and we are going to overtime here in Kansas. Well, wow, overtime on New Year's Day. Mario West down for the Yellow Jackets. They've already lost B.J. Elder to injury today. Wes in pain, but up and on his way back to the huddle. Overtime on the way from Allen Fieldhouse. Celebrating here today with about 16,000 people. The last time either one of these teams went to overtime was against each other in the Elite Eight last year. Now they're doing it all over and again. remember last year in the overtime, Jared Jack took over, yep. scored 8 of 13 points. Some controversial call in an overtime on a charge by Langford. But this is a different afternoon. It's in Lawrence, Kansas. Look at this great sportsmanship as the players are going around and slapping hands with one another as if it's the beginning of the game. They, I think they have such mutual respect for one another given the two games they've played against each other in the last year. I love the toughness of Bynum. He wasn't afraid to want to take the last shot, even though he gets called for the charge. Jack with a game high 26, and he's done so much more than that for the Yellow Jackets today. They're trying to double up Jack to get the ball out of his hands. Morrow, a good look, and he, he knocks shoot. down a long two. He's got a great stroke. I watched him in a warm up. He really does. Made those six threes in his last game, six for nine. Anthony Morrow now with five. Langford defended by Jack. Giddens in the corner. Moody the offensive rebound. Giddens on the drive. Moody can't handle the pass. Three on two. And the big fella, Schencher, all for the offensive foul. Jerry Jack turned his back to the basket, or he could have had himself a layup right there. Little too unselfish. The second charge called on Georgia Tech in the last minute or so of action. Take a look at Jared Jack, see his backs to the play. He could have taken that ball to the goal. Very unselfish play, but Miles steps in and gets that charge. A little questionable right there. Could have gone either way. The game's yes, happening at such a quick pace. Morrow goes out. West has returned. Obviously feeling better now for the Yellow Jackets. I like that NBA rule where they have that arc in here where you can't take yep. the charge in that area. If you're in that arc. Again, Kansas down by as many as 16 in the first half. Wayne Simeon out after thumb surgery, gone another few weeks. B.J. Elder strained his hamstring in the first half and has not returned for Georgia Tech. Miles on the drive. Ties the game. No, no. Charge. Wave it off. He's called for the charge. Tony Green with the call on Allen Miles. Number four on Miles. Here comes the drive down the lane. We're going to see it here. Good ball reversal. They do a great job swinging the ball. Here's the screen. He's going to go down the lane. Ooh, I thought that's a back call right there. He was moving. Didn't seem established. Didn't seem established. I thought on both there was kind of a little slide by the defenders. So maybe we're all even right now. Four fouls. Keep an eye on that. Miles is indispensable as any player Kansas has on the floor. Can't afford to have him on the sideline. Have no shot with him on the sideline. Bynum's got to know he's got four. He can attack him. He can attack him off the dribble. There it is. Right. Attack him. Schencher the follow. No good. Kansas ball. Schencher has not been as aggressive as I thought he would be here in no. his last year. Came on so strong at the end of last season. He's got to build on that. Here's Miles again. Galindo. It's out of bounds. Kansas retains possession, still looking for their first lead of the game. This house has been rocking. Can you imagine if they ever take the lead there? Galindo just one for seven. The one was a three, but he does have five rebounds, and he's been scrappy out there for the moment he came in. Bill Self was searching for that fifth player to play. One more guy to play in the front court. Galindo's just forced him to keep him on the floor. Sign of a lot of fatigue as players putting their hands on their knees and 
three or four of the Kansas players. Yep. The hands on me. Five second call, Dick. They didn't get it in in time. Hey, remember this, Doug. Doesn't mean it's spot when a referee hands the ball to a player. That player's entitled to move. People that say that's a pivot foot, you do not have a pivot foot when throwing the ball from the bounds. You have three foot area, you can move. Someone questioned that in the game with Kentucky with Sparks. Sparks is allowed to move. Langford knocks it away. Jack gets it back. Gentry was open for a moment. Now Moody finds it. Jack to the elbow. Baseline feed. Muhammad on the drive. Hangs and hits. That's that great ability to get up in the air in the three-second area. Spotted an opening. Utilized his jumping ability. And a timeout taken by Kansas. They've got one more left. Georgia Tech has gone back out in front here in overtime. Ismael Mohammed now with seven. Tech trying to beat Kansas for the second time in less than a year. Hey, Monday night, Jason Campbell leads the undefeated Auburn Tigers against the ACC champion Virginia Tech Hokies in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Coverage begins uh, with college game day on ESPN at 7 Eastern. And then a Monday night on ABC Sports, the game is at 8 Eastern. ABC Sports, home, as you know, of the Bowl Championship Series. Keith Langford on the bench right now. I think it could be offense. A little defense. offense defense. Yeah, I really yeah. do. I think you'll see him back. No, not really. No, not offense they got the right ball. now. Russell Robinson, yeah, Russell Robinson is into the game for Kansas. Langford has had a frustrating day. Six for 17. Came on strong in the second half. Could yeah. be a little fatigued there, too. He's holding yeah. his knees. He's bending over. Bill Self has taken one of the stars out. Drawn a freshman to Robinson in. And Robinson has a lot of poise and a lot of ability. Galindo, tough catch. He's a three-point shooter, Galindo. So is J.R. Giddens trying to get to the three-point line. Shot clock a factor down to six. Galindo, a contested three. He's a three-point shooter, Mr. Shulman. Scouting report says he could not down the trifecta. Here comes Langford. They were giving him just a little breathe. I thought he was worn out. Yeah. You're right. Langford back at the table. Under two minutes to play in overtime. Timeout, Georgia Tech. Each team with one timeout remaining. Alex Galindo is making himself a serious factor for the Jayhawks. And every time it looks like Georgia Tech's got a little breathing room, here comes the three. The shot that has revolutionized the game of college basketball. And Galindo, in effect, playing the power forward position, even though he's more of a perimeter player. Simeon is hurt. Giles is fouled out. Booty's up front with him. That's a tough matchup because of his size and his perimeter yep. skills. Yep. People have to check him on the exterior. And Very then, difficult. Then again, a guy like Muhammad can play the power forward spot at times for Georgia Tech. Three-point shooting, a huge factor today. Look at Kansas has taken 25 threes because without Simeon, they don't have an inside game. Well, thank you, Mr. Schumann. You're a coach as well. <laughs> you've got all kinds of ability. I mean, you've got all kinds of ability. Coach Schulman, you're 100% right. No post presence. One timeout remaining for each team. We're in overtime in as entertaining a game as you'll see all year. Langford with a steal. Miles to Giddens. And Kansas has its first lead of the game. First mistake by Jared Jack. He telegraphed that pass, and Langford read it perfectly. Jump hook by Sensor, rebound to Lindo. I also think he had a little fresh legs, Langford, getting that little break. Oh, what a special venue. What a special venue. My friends, if you haven't been treated to basketball, get out to Lawrence, Kansas, and get a feel for the electricity that exists. As like, see, he telegraphs that. He's showing that. You can read that. And there's the kick out. There's Giddings showing that athletic ability. Something he does not do enough. Drive to the basket. Galindo at the line. The freshman out of Newark, New Jersey. His first attempts of the day. Four for four on the season. Boy, and somebody hollered. I mean, this place got stone silent. And then somebody, maybe a Georgia Tech fan, hollered right at the moment that Galindo was about to release the ball. Well, he's earned a lot of playing time. Last two performances, last two games, it comes up empty. Wow, two, 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 two big misses there. Major misses there. Got to convert, you're at home, the free throw line. People said it's an area of concern. 
Kansas. Bynum being hounded by Miles, who's got four fouls. Three from the corner for the freshman, Anthony Morrow. Look at Morrow. You think he's basically afraid to take a big shot? With a stroke like that, I don't blame him. Coach is earning that money today. I tell you, that stomach is churning. There's the drive by Langford. Looking for his teammate. Langford's got it back. He loves to get in the lane and drive. There it is. He loves to get in the lane. He, last five games, averaging 18 a game. He's going to have to score big in the future games without Simeon. He really responded in the second half. Muhammad, unguarded, missed the shot. I don't know how these players are hearing a whistle. It is so tough to hear each other. The foul is on Galindo of Kansas. Georgia Tech will go to the line. But first, the shot by Morrow. It's the three by Morrow. Excellent look from the trifecta line. Now look at Langford. We're going to watch Langford get the ball back. And we'll bring it out to him. There it is. Loves driving in this area. Left-handed player. Going to his left. Muhammad, not a good free throw shooter, hits the first. This has been going back and forth so quickly, so crazily. That I think that shot by Morrow was a long two. I believe it was he a two had, instead of a three. I, I believe he had a foot on the line. I looked up two. at the score and expected something different than I saw. It is a two, that is a two for right Georgia there. Tech. But the scoreboard you see is correct. This to break the tie. Kansas has a chance to win it. Just like they did in regulation. Will it be Langford time? Or maybe penetration by Miles? I would let Miles attack the basket. He either look for Langford or Giddings. He's not open on the drive. Into the hands of Langford. Langford. They want it to hit again. Had the last opportunity in regulation. There he goes. There's the spin. Got it! it! Oh! He set it up to come up big to win. He set it up to come up big to win. And he responded. But this has to be pretty close to the top of the list of the most exciting games you've been in. Well, there's no doubt. It doesn't get more exciting than this. <laughs> two rivals in terms of two quality basketball teams. A rival only because of what happened last year in that Elite Eight matchup. Losing him over time. And there's Langford, a little one-on-one -on -one move. Figured he wanted the ball. That little respite really helped him. There's that little jump shot. Great touch. Big time player. You know, you got a quality matchup. Two of the top ten teams in America. You're playing in a situation where last year one of the teams was denied their third journey in a row. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Pierre. That's the special at the farm. No doubt. 2.1 seconds to play. Georgia Tech with the ball. Two to tie, three to win. You know, to have a great meal, you have to have all the ingredients, and they all have to be perfect. Well, you got the ingredients here. You got great coaches. You got great players. You got great fans. You got an electrical kind of environment, a great venue that all league worlds to be to a super afternoon. And Keith Langford, Dick, who had two points at halftime, has 18 now. He did exactly what you said he had to do, step up and play like a star in the second half. Well, we talked about it halftime. We said no chance at all for Kansas to win unless Langford scores and scores big time. He was one for eight at the half. He responded and responded as a PT Pierce is supposed to respond. Now, Dick, they've gone to the clock and they've put more time back on it. So instead of 2.1, Georgia Tech will have 3.3 seconds to put something go in, in play here. And for the fans out there, remember the clock does not start until the ball is touched on the floor by a player on the floor. Moulin Yon is going to come into the game. 6-9, long arms yes, just around the inbound. Well, remember the year that Kentucky lost to Duke, but they didn't bother the guy throwing the ball at fans. Mr. Hill, they got it for late now. Paul Ewan wanted to take a look. And now Kansas will use its final timeout. 
Kansas trailed the entire game, did not get its first lead until overtime. Tied it late, had a chance to win it in regulation. It didn't go. Sent it to overtime, though. Took their first lead in overtime, and now 3.3 seconds away from a win if they can play some good D. That's the beauty, though, and the essence of college basketball. How these games right now, to me, are so special because they don't damage you. Everybody's 0 0 with your start of March Madness, but you find out about your team. Rather than beating up on somebody with a bargain basement goodie, a Christmas special, you pound somebody by 40 and 50. What do you get out of that? I, I really think, you know, you play some of them, but some teams play such an exclusive club of cupcakes. Last year, when Kansas trailed with five minutes left, they lost all eight games. 1-0 this year, as they came back late to beat South Carolina. They're 8-0. They're unbeaten. They're ranked second in the nation. Georgia Tech is 9-1. Their only loss to Gonzaga. Georgia Tech will have the ball with 3.3 seconds to play. I had Kansas in my poll, number one, prior to... Illinois beating Wake Forest because they haven't lost since then. I've just kept them there. It's certainly right now one of eight unbeaten teams. A gutty performance without Simeon, but remember Georgia Tech became a different team without B.J. Elder. Yep. They were dominating when he was on the floor prior to his injury. Muhammad to inbound. He can run that baseline. Jack. Tough to get a look. Jack steps out of bounds. No call for a travel. Jack called for a travel. Kansas gets the ball. You can't call Jack on that play. Did everything he could just to catch it. It was a tough play to yeah. catch that basket. You, you can't fault him at oh, all. Oh, no, yeah. it was a tough catch to make. It was not a good entry. Good move by bothering a guy, throwing it yeah. out. Made him run to his weak hand side. And Moulin Yon getting hugged by all of his teammates as he comes back down. That was a big substitution by Bill Self to get him in there. A simple play like that. A simple play like taking Langford out for 20 seconds. All of those things, the coaches maneuvers, people don't realize how vital they are. Well, you would certainly stop a little bit in terms of his ability to maneuver with the fact that Elder going out of the game like he did with that injury. Giddens gets it in, and Galindo is fouled as the clock runs down to 1.6. Remember, Galindo missed a couple just about a minute ago. He's getting a little pep talk from his teammate. So you're a good shooter, step to that line, put this away, put it in a record book so we all can celebrate our New Year's. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Georgia Tech's going to have a great year. Not a good year, yep. a great year. These are two great teams. They're, These two teams are playing without their leading scorers exactly. right now, both out with injuries. We're seeing them without their number one options are not on the floor. Both are so well coached. Both times like a competitive this. Three in a row, he's been. Wow. They've been here four in a row. Wow. Shencher Morrow back in for Georgia Tech as Wayne Simeon looks on. 1.6 to play. Tech will at least have a desperation attempt to tie the game, depending on what Galindo does here. And this shot is not all that bad. Yeah, you're Think right. about it. Yep. And this shot, grab possession, tough to get a shot off. And this shot isn't all as bad. Taking the ball out of bounds. What a win. This win. What an incredible win. They looked like they were absolutely no shot when they were down 16. They were, didn't look organized, looked like they were out of rhythm, but a gutty play defensively, and Langford and Miles just wouldn't let them lose in the second half. An extraordinary game and a terrific comeback by Kansas. Down 16 in the first half. Never led until late in the first over in overtime. They hang on to win 70 to 68, and Dick, they're still unbeaten. I don't know how they did it today at points, but they did it. They're still unbeaten. They're unbeaten and certainly earned the win against a quality team in Georgia Tech. And Langford really became a star in the second half, utilizing that great ability that he possesses, scoring ability, wanting the ball, making big shots. And standing by with our Doris Burke is Coach Bill Self. Doris, over to you. Bill, without your star, Wayne Simeon, trailing by as many as 16 in the second half, not getting a lead until overtime. What kind of mental effort did it take from your guys today? Well, I can't even hear what you're saying, Doris, but uh, <laughs> we showed a lot of toughness. We didn't play well. It was an ugly game. They do a good job muddying up. We did a good job of muddying it up. But our guys made some plays. We've changed a lot in the last week, and we're not very good at it yet. But 
I think we'll get a lot better. But I'm really proud of this guy. He didn't he didn't have a great first half, but he was awesome second half. No, down the stretch, you had a chance to win it at the end of regulation. You go back to Keith. Was that the stretch set from the get-go? Well, that's why we wanted to do the first time, and we got in his way. So that was my fault. Second time, we didn't make that mistake. Congratulations on a great win. Keith, you had a chance at the end of regulation to win it. You get a second chance in overtime. What's going through your mind after having missed this first shot at it? Uh, well, coach, the first time, Coach wanted to get everybody away from me. Uh, the first time, Shisha came up, and he's a big guy, so the shot fell kind of short. The second time, I told him to give it to me with nobody around me, and I'll make the shot. You guys had to play without Wayne Simeon against a top 10 team. You were down by as many as 16. What were the conversations amongst yourselves when you're down by that many? Uh, it, it was tough, but uh, Wayne believed in us and the whole team believed in everybody. And we've been just preparing to play for comp play conference games without Wayne. And this is a big step towards that. You're a superstitious guy. We understand you changed your shoes at the halftime. Yeah, I did. I changed and it worked. I had the shiny red ones on the second half and it, and it helped me out. Congratulations on a great right, thanks game. A lot. Thanks, Keith. Dan. Doris, thank you. There you go, Dick. He changed his shoes, changed his luck. Hey, shoes, baby. It wasn't the shoes. It's that left-handed stroke that he has. And he really asserted himself in the second half and was a PTP or a primetime performer. What a way to ring in the New Year, college basketball style. We hope you enjoyed it. Kansas over Georgia Tech, 70 to 68 in overtime. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, and our whole crew, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year.